Hey everybody, this is Luigi from Catholic HV. It is the week, the week of Restore the Immaculate Part 2. And you know what that means? It means it's a week full of live stream promos of introducing you to all of our speakers, presenters, artists, we want you to meet them. We want you to get to know them. And we want you to come on Saturday, this coming Saturday, to Restore the Immaculate Part 2. We are blessed today to have with us Stephen Aguino, who is from Bosco Beats, who is also a coordinator for the Archdiocese of New York Youth Ministry Office. Stephen, thanks for being with us. Hey, Luigi. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. My, uh, my first question for you is, can you, what is Bosco Beats? So, uh, funny you say that. Well, Bosco Beats is the name of the ministry, but it's I think it's in the, in the midst of a transition to just being Steve Aguino, but I still use Bosco Beats. And that name was inspired because I was with the Salesians for seven years in formation. And while I was in formation, uh, I was a part of a rap duo that we created called the Bosco Boys for St. John Bosco. Um, but I produced all of, uh, all of our own music, so all of our own beats. And that's where the name Bosco Beats comes from. That's awesome. Not the chocolate syrup, just <laughs> and not the uh, the vegetable. Well, I um, I think it was awesome because I've I've known about you for a long time, and it's only in this past year that I've actually got to connect you personally. Um, but I also know that you used to discern priesthood a bit, and we'll we'll get to that in a, in a few minutes. Um, but currently, you are a youth uh, coordinator. You're the coordinator for the Northern Counties for the Office of Youth Ministry for Archdiocese, and you also recently just got married isn't that a beautiful thing <laughs> oh it's it's great it's the best um but as i just mentioned beforehand you were discerning priesthood um has having the blessed mother in your life impacted your discernment going from into the priesthood out of the or into seminary out of seminary into married life how important is she to where you are in your life both personally and professionally well that is a great question because you know, I feel like the Blessed Mother is a mother for everybody. And I learned that when I was 13 years old, right before I made my confirmation. And it's so amazing. And, uh, you know, I, I talk about St. John Bosco a lot, but one of the things that he has had profound experiences of were dreams. And dreams were his mission and his vocation is shared in that. And for me, literally the night before that I was confirmed, I had a dream um, all about the Blessed Mother. And I was literally fighting the devil around my own family and friends and neighborhood and community. Um, but what saved me every single time was making the sign of the cross and praying the Hail Mary, but singing it in the form like from the song Gentle Woman, you're like, Hail Mary, full of grace. <laughs> and so when I woke up that morning, I went, oh my goodness, she's real. She's real. <laughs> These prayers are real. Like she wants me to pray the rosary to defeat the devil. Like I, I'm scared, but I'll do it. Yeah. Um, and so just knowing that and having that confidence has taken me through so many different uh, events of life. And then also um, one thing that I was able to reflect on recently within the last year is I did the 33 day uh, consecration, Morning Glory, Father mm -hmm. Michael Gately's book and the whole process. And the phrase that like was seared into my heart was the line from our blessed mother at the wedding feast of Cana where she says, do whatever he tells you. Mm -hmm. And so from hearing that and reflecting on it and praying on it and thinking all the way back in my life and hearing that small voice of mm -hmm. Steve and you have a vocation, do whatever he tells you, go for it. Mm -hmm. So I, I put down my fears. I, I put down all my, my worries and doubts. And I said yes to God's call of discernment and discerning the priesthood. And it was in that process that I continue to hear those words of do whatever he tells you um, and really feeling that Jesus was leading me into new avenues of ministry, but to still continue to discern the priesthood. Um, but ultimately it was a beautiful experience because I spent the most of my twenties in a religious life. Um, and I know that there's a, a lot of guys out in the world, especially some of my friends who spend their twenties out in the world. And, um, you know, I'm able to see kind of, you know, not and not in any sort of way, like I'm putting myself on a pedestal, but I, I was blessed because I know that I would be experiencing those same exact struggles if I didn't have that time away, mm -hmm. sort of away from the world, but in the world um, to see where God was calling me. So I think that experience of 
the discernment switching and turning and saying, okay, maybe this is not the place for me, mm -hmm. but Holy Spirit, I want you to guide me. I said, I'm going to, you know, I'm in my rowboat and I'm hanging on tight, but you got, you have to be the wave that's going to move me. I'm not going to row in a direction that you don't want me to go. So I'm just going to stop rowing and, you know, see where you lead me and take me. So again, those words echo to my heart, do whatever he tells you without really knowing it. Um, and it was, Steve, I want you to continue to, you know, praise me and glorify me and share me with the world, but through speaking, through music and through video. Um, so that's what I'm able to do today. Thank God. I think that's a, an absolute beautiful witness and testimony. And, um, you know, this year or not this year, but this whole conference is dedicated to Mary. We, we need Mary more than ever right now in this world. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also, when you mentioned that song, Hail Mary gentle woman, um, it's one of my favorites. My mom used to sing it to me as a child. And so there's this sense of familiarity and the sense of comfort that you get from it. It's almost like when you hear that song, it's almost like you could feel Mary's arms wrapping around you and holding her close. And and so my I have three little ones and I got number four on the way. And um, all of them know that song because I constantly sing that song to them. When they're crying, when I'm trying to put them to sleep, I'm always singing Hail Mary, Gentle Woman, because it was one of those songs that I know I felt comfort with growing up. And, um, and that's the kind of comfort that Our Lady wants us to have is to be able to go to her in times of struggle and times of need and to feel her arms and to feel her comfort and her presence. Um, so I think that's an absolute beautiful witness, especially when you're talking about your discernment um, from priesthood, married life, professional life. Um, but it's also interesting to hear that you, you discerned with your brother, right? Didn't did I, you guys discern at the same time? You know, it's it's funny. So my, my older brother, Michael, is a priest, and he entered formation with the Salesians right out of high school. So at 18 years old, he discerned, he made his perpetual profession, he was ordained as a priest with the Salesians. Um, but there was a period of time um, when he was in his last years of theology, and I was in my first years of formation, uh, that we were actually in the same community for, I wanted, I think it was two years but that was too long. Uh, just, you know, I grew up with him, but to be in religious life with your own brother is awesome. But at the same time, it's like, come on, you never did that when we were younger. But, you know, why why are you changing to somebody who, who wants to work so much? Like, come on, what happened to your kind of laid back personality? But no, it was such a blessing to be able to experience um, discerning in that way, because, of course, every every um, sort of avenue in life has its ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And. When you have somebody who's in your corner who understands what you're going through, it really helps you through those moments. So there were times when I would just be able to walk down the hallway and knock on his door and say, like, Mike, I'm like, this is crazy. This is really tough. And he's able to talk with me and walk with me and say, oh, let's let's go for a walk or let's go, you know, let's go to school and, you know, walk around the campus. Um, but having a brother there in religious life was incredible. Um, and it was kind of like a, a fun thing to show off and say, hey. There's two of us in here. But in the beginning, I was like, there's no way I'm discerning religious life. You already have my older brother. You don't need two of us. Um, <laughs> but God was definitely calling me to. Um, but what was funny is a lot of people say, oh, you're following your brother's footsteps. And I used to get annoyed by that. Um, <laughs> and so I was like, I no, I, I'm blazing my own trail led by the Holy Spirit. And they were like, hmm, interesting. Well, we'll pray for you. And I was like, I need it, please. I think it's funny that you mentioned that. I have a, a an older brother who's five years older than me, and I've always been known as either Joe's little brother or little Menente. Um, and they're always like, you want to be just like your brother. And actually, as a little kid, I really did, uh, mostly because he was the cool guy. You know, he was the, the good looking one. He had all the girls. Um, and uh, and it, it was funny how as I grew older and I realized, like, that's not the kind of life I wanted. Right. Um, and, and our lives, both of our lives changed. My brother's not the same person he was years ago. And my life, you know, I used to live in the world myself is not the same life. But um, uh, like it, it, our relationship slowly changed from being one of little brother to big brother to being just brother. Yeah. Um, and there are many a times where we had discussions on faith and, 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 and um, you know, our lady and, and our Lord. And uh, and it was me that was, you know, leading the conversation as opposed to him. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I totally understand that it's 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 such an interesting dynamic, especially when you have an older brother and you're so used to looking up to them. And then all of a sudden they become your peer. Mm -hmm. And it's like, ah, that, that's when that's when your Lord's got you in the right place. Yeah. And I think what's incredible, too, is you said it so perfectly. It's just like little brother, big brother, but we are brothers. And it's almost a sense of, um, you know, we're able to have our conversations on another level. Like we have. 
an, another brother and a sister and both of them are are married and you know have you know beautiful families but um you know i'm i'm there i'm in the process of you know i just got married but what's imp what's really beautiful is that we're able to share this sort of bond that we have in a very particular way because mm -hmm. We went through something so profound that was, you know, really led by the Holy Spirit. Our Blessed Mother was in the midst. And um, it's almost I can sort of compare it to guys who serve in the military together. Like when they're around their civilian friends, people can appreciate it and understand it. But unless you're in the trenches with somebody, you can fully understand their experiences. So that's something that we have. And thank God that experience is rooted in Jesus Christ, which is awesome. That's funny uh, and beautiful. I think. Uh... You, you mentioned something about um, the the giving, you know, and, and gift. And um, one of the things I'm always, always mentioning is the best way to honor a gift that you're given is to give it back. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the many, like we just had the, the story of the talents this past weekend during mass. It's like, yeah. what are you doing with your talents? What are you doing with your gifts? You know, and God gives you something. He gives it to you for a reason, not so you can hoard it, not so you can just hold it on to yourself, but to give it back. And you have this wonderful gift of music, this wonderful gift of art. And, and you were talking before about in, in your discernment, how God wants you to go out and give that back. And this weekend, you're our featured performer for Catholic Underground North. And we're so excited, so blessed to have you. Um, you know, and your genre of music is not typically one that we have. It, it's, it's just a much different culture. Um, but, you know, it's, it's definitely not one that we typically bring in often. Um, and so uh, I wanted to find out what can we expect from Stephen Aguino of Bosco Beats this coming Saturday at Restore and at Catholic Underground North? Like where, you know, what what, what kind of encounter are we going to have with hmm. you and with, with our Lord? Well, um, thank you for having me, first of all, because, you know, when I got the word that Catholic Underground North and Restore was going on, um, I was like, Yes, I'm ready for this. Let's do this. <laughs> uh, you know, I like to joke around and tell people that my genre of music is opera because I always start off by saying, you know, not many people appreciate this sort of music in this environment. And, they'll, you know, <laughs> they'll think like, oh, like singer, songwriter, like guitar, whatever. <laughs> uh, but then I'll just start belting out some like random opera music and then I'll just say no. Um, but the genre of music that I love sharing is rap music. And uh, it's really interesting because... I have loved rap music my whole life. Um, grew up like, you know, uh, asking my friends to burn CDs for me that I would get in trouble for from my parents. Like, what are you doing with this music? This is horrible. Um, but then, they, you know, I got introduced into better music and I met Father Stan Fortuna of the CFRs and just being open to like mm -hmm. that whole um, reality of what music could be, especially with our faith, like lit a fire in my heart that I was like, I don't know what this is, but I want to discover it one day and like really tap into it. Um, and so honestly, what people can expect is just to hear something different and to have fun. And I think something that I have been truly blessed with is to be able to translate the joy of our faith into something tangible. And so the experience that you have, it's, it's going to be uplifting. It's going to be joyful, joy filled. The Holy Spirit's going to be moving. You're going to be dancing. You're going to be laughing. You awesome. might even be crying. Uh, I don't know why you're crying, but if you are, you should be <laughs> laughing and dancing. Um, but it's just a real sense of a shared faith and, uh, you know, a time for the community to gather together and, and to rejoice because Jesus is real. He's alive. And I feel like my my main uh, mission through the music, main mission through the music, it's a lot of M's, is to let people know that our faith is not boring. Like mm. we are the boring ones. If we are given a gift so incredible and never open it and never use it, it's like getting something crazy or amazing and being like, I don't know what to do with this thing and put it on the shelf. And like that gift is worthless. But then when somebody comes in and they're like, wait, you have that. Let me show you what you can do with that thing. Like it's incredible. And so I love having the, the ability to just come and to just bring life into new situations and new places so i'm thrilled i'm i'm so excited to uh, to go and if you you right now you who are watching this and listening to this <laughs> if you are thinking hmm should i go the answer is yes the answer is yes you should definitely go um it's going to be really worth it and if you give god just a little bit of your time he's going to give you a whole lot more in return so just think about that here's a little secret 
and it's you know how we begin each of these sessions with a little song a couple a couple seconds of music i don't do it because i think people think it's going to be cool i don't do it because i think they they like to hear it. i do it because it gives me energy mm. and it's the same kind of energy that you're going to get if you come and watch steve Aguino you know, this saturday at catholic underground north you'll be dancing you'll be smiling you'll be crying with joy that's right but it's going to be a time you won't forget so Stephen, thank you so much for being with us and for coming this Saturday to share your gift of music with us. Um, for those that haven't done it yet, go to www.restorecatholic.com. Sign up for the Restore Conference. Uh, we have some great speakers, including Sister Bethany Madonna from the Sisters of Life. She is going to be fantastic. She's going to be speaking on Mary as Mother of the Son, also uh, in, in relation to our vocations and our call to holiness. Uh, we'll also have Father Louis Massey from St. Mary's in Fishkill. Um, we'll also have Mike Corsini returning with his uh, missionary image of Mary, Mother of God of Priests from St. Faustina's Diary. It is such an amazing work. I am absolutely in love. Um, so, you know, make sure to put this weekend aside. Uh, and then we're going to cap it off uh, with Catholic Underground North with Steve Aguino uh, sharing his gift with us. So thank you all for being with us. Steve, thank you so much. Thank you for everything. Um, and we're, uh, we're looking forward to seeing you on Saturday. Thank you so much. And if you guys want to see any of the music that I've done, you can definitely check it out on social media at The Bosco Beats. T-H-E-B-O-S-C-O-B-E-A-T-S. The Bosco Beats. And uh, we'll see you guys there. He's also tagged in this post. So make sure you click on it, like the page. We'll see you soon. God bless you all. Mm -hmm.